Welcome everybody to Houston, where the New England Patriots are slumming it down to pay a visit to the Houston Texans. With all the action and sticky bleachers, I am Corey. I am Bob here with you tonight. We should have a good game here. Uh, Houston definitely playing better football now, and uh, New England, of course, coming off two straight losses. Mm, tough after their big, big, big start. Stephen Guskowski kicks off to Cecil Shorts the third, one of the best names in the National Football League. And the Houston Texans will start the game with good field position. Absolutely. Looks like Foster's going to have a nice run to start off the game there. That's definitely what the Texans have been missing throughout the entire season is a consistent running game. Yes, and Arian Foster in the past has been their rock-solid rock carrier. Uh, and he's got a good start here. Two, route, two runs and a first down for Houston in business near the 50-yard line. Absolutely. And Hoyer with the pitch there to Foster, and Foster's going to take it for another first down. That's two first downs quickly. So far, Foster has got power both between the tackles and around the edge, and so far Houston hasn't need any other weapons, although now Hoyer's back to pass from under center. He's got all day. It is to Jay Prosh, their fullback. That was a nice tackle there by New England. Uh, definitely tackle him behind the line of scrimmage there. Yeah, and here's Prosh again. He's their second-year fullback out of Auburn, looking to make a difference, maybe just spelling Foster after a few good plays, a few hard-earned yards. It was a nice gain there on second down, and it looks like uh, Hoyer's got all day to throw, and they're going deep. Oh, and is that a, that's a reception there by DeAndre Hopkins for a long first down, and they are in the red zone. What a beautiful catch, a leaping grab down inside the five, and Foster is going to walk in untouched. Just like that, the Houston Texans are enforcing their will on the visiting Patriots. Punched him right in the mouth there, did uh, the Texans to uh, the Patriots there. And Bullock with the extra point attempt here, and that's good. Wow, and just like that, Hardly any time has gone in this game, and it's all Houston so far. We're kicking off to Danny Amendola for New England. Let's see if they can get a drive going. Now, if there's anyone that you are thinking can punch back, I think it's going to be Tom Brady and this New England offense, Bob. Absolutely. We know how violent the Patriots can be, and uh, they definitely like to punch. So Brady with the handoff to, uh, oh, the fake to Blunt there, and... He's going to take it for the run. No one expects the Brady QB sneak. There. Oh, wow. Brady on the naked bootleg end around gets a first Ooh. down. What a surprise, as you said, Bob. We did see his legs last week, and uh, oh, there's that beautiful HD camera there. Ah, for the incomplete pass, thrown into nice coverage there by the Texans. Gronkowski was the intended receiver. Tom Brady not able to connect. He's going to bring up second down. He's keeping it himself again, around to the left. Ooh, and this time he's going to pass to Julian Edelman, who makes the grab for a first down. I don't know if uh, Tom Brady has found the fountain of youth or what, but man, he's moving around in the pocket like he's never done before. And there he goes off again. Not just in the pocket, Bob. He is between the tackles and around the edge, using his legs to confuse this Houston defensive front. I can definitely say I bet the Texans didn't see that one coming, but there's J.J. Watt with the first sack of the game there. I have to call that a coverage sack. He was standing there for three or four full seconds looking for an open target before Watt could get to him. Absolutely. And with the check down interception, whoa, and quickly, the Texans get the ball back there. That is Raheem Moore, the free safety from UCLA. So the Texans with good field position. Here's a nice pass to Short, and that one is picked off by Patrick Chung. That was just a bad throw there by Hoyer. There was nobody in the vicinity there, and... Uh, the New England Patriots with an easy interception. So we have two plays, two interceptions, and New England has got the ball back, and they are working uh, from decent field position, having lost just a little bit from the interception. Brandon Bolden with the carry. That was a nice run there by Bolden, uh, replacing the, uh, oh, sorry, J.J. Watt there with another sack. Quickly, two here in the first quarter. Yes, wow, two yeah, big sacks for the big, big man. Second down and 19 to go. Brady, here is Blunt. First time having the ball in his hands this game, and he's got a nice little run. Speaking of punching back, LeGarrette Blunt, a very famous haymaker thrower. Mm -hmm. Going back to his college days what? at the University of Oregon. Absolutely. He's got a dangerous right hook, so don't make him mad. And J.J. Walk already with the hat trick there. Yes, and, wow. Uh, New England's going to be forced to punt the football. Brady struggled with him a little bit until some uh, reinforcements come in on defense and help Watt bring him down, but Watt with the first man with the hands on the quarterback. The punt's going to be to Cecil Shorts, and it's a beauty. He'll take it inside the 10 wow. and not much farther than that. That was nice special teams coverage there by uh, New England, and uh, Houston starting off at their own 10. Jay Prosh again going nice. to the fullback, and he's going out of outside the tackle box. I'm not sure I 
uh, understand the play call there to get your fullback trying to run out to the outside and why you don't put the speedy Foster out there in these outside plays. Although it's worked out there two runs in a row and it's a first down for Houston. Absolutely. They must see something in the New England defense that they uh, can take advantage of. And Hoyer taken off quickly trip down there for a short gain on second down or first down sorry about that quarterback showing even less speed than his fullback <laughs> oh but with all day to throw he long bomb here to hopkins and hopkins with a beautiful jumping grab and all the way down to new england's 20. hopkins with a beautiful hop to catch that deep pass he is two for two on receptions and both big bombs to set them up in good position foster back in the game nothing going on first down I gotta say, Hopkins is definitely one of the most underrated uh, wide receivers in the league. And definitely showing off uh, his prowess here tonight on Sunday night. Oh, but Foster with some beautiful moves for his second touchdown of the game. Foster pinballed between his tackles and the defensive tackles for a good two or three seconds. I saw him bounce four or five times off of those tackle boxes before he made a couple of open field cuts and danced into the end zone. Here in the first half of action, we got uh, the Texans up 14-0 over the New England Patriots. And Bullock off with the kickoff here to Amendola. Bullock, of course, the older brother of Sandra. <laughs> Amendola takes it five yards deep into the end zone and unwisely tries to run it out. And he makes it back to about the eight-yard line where Tom Brady and company will take over. About a minute and a half left to go before halftime. And they're using their timeouts to save some time. I'm not sure back this far in the field if how aggressive you want to be making the calls here, Bob. Exactly. I think uh, it all depends on how second down goes. And obviously it didn't go very well. But they're still going to call timeout here with third and five and a minute 16 left here in the half. They have to take a shot downfield and yes. try to get this first down. Now they are down 14 here with a what is proving to be a very deadly Houston offense. So oh, Edelman makes a nice grab for a first down. Now that's gonna time's gonna be a concern. They will call their final timeouts, hoping to get into field goal range at least, as you said, Bob. They still have a lot of field to make up here, uh, hopefully to get in with field goal range, but uh with the run there, don't really understand that play call to the middle of the field. From their own 31, <laughs> under a minute to go, trying to get field goal range, they go for a handoff up the middle to LeGarrette Blunt. And the same to uh, LeGarrette Blunt again, but uh, running down the sideline, he's got room. Can he get out of bounds or make it all the way? Blunt, he will be stopped. All three seconds left, and they're out of timeouts. Uh, oh. Oh, New England not able to get out to spike the ball. That's unusual uh, clock management problems there by the Patriots, who are usually pretty great at that. But uh, we go into halftime with the Texans up 14-0 in a pretty action-packed game so far. Wow, this game absolutely should be 14-3. LeGarrette Le Blunt should have been watching that clock as he came down the field when he saw that that clock was going down to zero, and when he saw the defender chasing him down from behind, all you got to do is step on the sideline uh -huh. there, LeGarrette. Yep, step on the sideline or uh, kick it into extra... Uh, the extra gear there to get into for the touchdown. It looked like he had all day to run and uh, kind of slid up there at the end. So got to give credit to the Houston defects. Houston looking to keep things going here in the second half. By the way, all of our games on Sticky Bleachers and Tech Mobile are brought to you by the good people at techmobile.org, techmobile.org, as you see there in the end zone. They're very generous sponsors purchasing end zone ads for us. Find everything mm -hmm. with Tech Mobile in the 21st century at techmobile.org. I believe they also sponsored the jerseys for both teams today, and uh, both are looking great. <laughs> Brady's Brady standing his in his own, own, end, own zone. end zone. Danny Amendola is open down the field, and he makes the beautiful grab, and he's down to about the 30-yard line of Houston. Wow, what a way to start off your second half when you're down 14-0, Bob. Absolutely, but I got to say, I like the speed on this Houston defense. They're catching defenders who seem to be wide open. And Brady with another long bomb to the end zone and incomplete in the double coverage there. Mm, but it was Gronkowski in double coverage, so that has to count for something. Gronk back from his uh, injury a couple weeks ago. Uh, nice to see him back there out in the action. Third and 13 here, Brady. Under center and Watt Ooh. with another sack. Is there anybody else that plays for the Texans besides J.J. Watt? Wow. Ouch. And a critical sack. That really is going to push them out of practical field goal range and force a punt. And Allen with a nice punt there. Going to go. Well, that would have been a field goal. <laughs> yes, Ryan Allen, sadly, that is not worth the three points that the field goal would have been had J.J. Watt not delivered the hammer hits in the backfield. Now, here we go. Houston back. Oh, it's a beautiful little screen to Graham. Garrett Graham, their nice second there. tight end. We don't often hear from him these days. Yeah, you never see it coming, the backup tight end. 
And Hoyer again with all day to throw. Long bomb to Hopkins. Ah, oh, nice Ooh. block there by New England. Tipped up. Uh, New England not able to make the interception, but uh, Hopkins again, a weapon downfield. They are not afraid to go to him. Here's a little pitch back to Foster around the left. He's looking to turn the corner. He will make a nice little run. Third down and two. At this point, with the way Houston's been able to run the ball, I don't understand why they're taking shots down the field. They just got to eat up the clock and keep the chains moving. I definitely agree. Now, that time, Foster was back. He was not able to get that first down. There's a rare punt from the Houston Texans offense today. Leckler is going to boom it deep, 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 and it's going to be in the back of the end zone and out of the end zone for a touchback. I think that one would have been good for a field goal as well. <laughs> Much longer than the one from Allen just a minute ago. And with pressure in his face already right away on first down, he makes the cool. completion to Danny Amendola, who's running down the field wide open again, Bob. Texans brought the house that left Amendola open down the field, and a nice throw there by Brady under pressure. And very few Brady quarterbacks can off. find him like Brady can. Absolutely. Bolden with a nice run there to set up a second and five for second and six. And uh, Brady back to pass with Watt in his face. I tell you, Watt is literally flying all over the field. He is a monster, and yeah, he has been in Brady's grill every time he's gone back to pass. Now, he's come, Watt has come out on top a few times, but Brady has gotten a few of those passes over the top. It's still just a two-score game. If I'm New England, I have to worry about those uh, shots that Brady's taken. But Giskowski with the field goal attempt. It's up, and it's good. New England finally gets on the board. 14-3 Texans with the lead. And that's going to bring us just about to the end of the third quarter. In fact, this kickoff will be the final play of our third quarter. Cecil Shorts with a nice return, and that's where Houston will take over as we start the fourth quarter. Now Houston with the score and a half lead, trying to just con control the clock, keep the chains moving, as you said, Bob. Absolutely. It was a nice stop there on first down by the Patriots. Set up a second and long here for the Texans. Pull your hands off. Oh, fake the hands off again. He's got all day to throw. Hopkins looking again. Oh, oh, with the proverbial nail in the coffin, Hopkins taken off, and he will be stopped oh. at New England's five-yard line. But still, a tremendous gain there, and this might be a uh, this might be the game clincher here for the Texans. But Hopkins, what a weapon to have someone downfield. That looks like it was just a throwaway pass. Cecil Short, the nearest receiver, not anywhere in the catchable area for him. This again, this is an area I wouldn't throw the ball. I give it to Arian Foster and let him do his uh do his job. That's absolutely what I would do in the same situation. Settling for a field goal isn't the worst thing here. You just want to get time off the clock and uh, keep the ball in New England's hand. But Devin Ooh. McCourty with the interception in the end zone and New England still has life. That's critical because they could have, with a field goal, kept it a two touchdown lead. But now Brady and company are looking to take the lead with two touchdowns here with 312 to go in the game. I can tell you, uh, with the way Foster's been running, I don't necessarily agree with that uh, play call by Houston, but J.J. Watt with, what, his sixth <laughs> sack of the game? How many times have we seen him in the backfield today with his hands on the ball carrier? Does he get extra money for Papa John's for every sack or something? Ooh, Brady just happy to get this ball out of his hands to Danny Amendola oh. again! And we're at midfield for New England, and here they start digging into their timeouts. Now that... Bit them in the first half. Let's see if it uh, works to their advantage in the second. Yes, and if that ball wasn't overthrown, I think Danny Amendola would still be running. He had to leave his feet to haul that one in. This is a handoff to Bolden, who makes a nice run. Second down and two to go, and they will call their second timeout with 2.24 left in this game. Yeah, and I understand sticking with the run game even late in the game, but you got to move the ball down the field and you got to get a quick score because uh, they don't have a lot of time left. Ah! And a huge incomplete pass there by... Tom Brady and the Patriots. Had to get rid of it quickly. Guess who was in his face again? J.J. Uh, Watt. J.J. Watt is correct. Again, affecting the play even when he isn't pulling the sacks down. And the Patriots are out of timeouts with just over two minutes left to go in this game. A long Optimus. field goal attempt coming. Let's see if Kukowski be two for two here. Oh, and he kicks it in off the post. I believe he called it. And we have a 6-14 to 14 game here. Now, uh, onside kick, or do they go? They do go onside kick. Arian Foster recovers, recovers on the hands team, and he has oh. got some green. He's caught from behind at the New Ooh. England 30. I don't know how more obvious it can be for the Texans. Give the ball to Arian Foster and just let him do his thing. Yes, look at this. There it is. Adrian Peter Foster just got <laughs> another first down. <laughs> Whatever, you know, one I'm, of those guys. I'm not going to let you get away with it, partner. Not today here in Houston, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Pro 
approach. Oh, he was reminding me so of much loss. of AP. <laughs> he was reminding me so much of AP. AF is always called. And that's right, AF. I think AF would take uh, a compliment to be compared to AP, at least oh, for yeah. his performance on the field. Maybe not for his off-field issues. It's a strong disciplinarian. <laughs> <laughs> and Hoyer back to pass here. And <laughs> some shorts. Oh, oh, intercepted again in the end zone. And that is Patrick Chung again pulling that one down. Patrick Chung, this one in the end zone, and Brady and company still not out of it. Still not. It looked like uh, Brady was almost sacked by one of his own players there on that play. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I go with the quick screen pass down two scores up, but McKinney. Oh, finally. Someone else can get a sack on the, the Houston Texans team. Benardic McKinney with Houston making a name for himself, finally getting himself on the board with his Houston defense. J.J. Watt almost gets to this one oh. again, but he does get the pass out safely to Bolden. Still not enough for a first down, not enough to get them anywhere close, and that's going to be it here from Houston. Texans over the Patriots 14-6. to Bob. Impressive game by Houston there. Definitely came out. Uh, we're the more energetic team, and they put 14 points in the board early and uh, never really looked back. Patriots definitely struggled with their offense as well, so we'll see how that plays out the rest of the season. What'd you see, Corey? Uh, I would, the Houston just had a stranglehold on this game all the way through despite a couple of turnovers, uh, advantageous interceptions by the Patriots. I think this game could have been much more lopsided in favor of Houston without a couple of sloppy plays like that. Now I have to ask, Bob, between Arian Foster's ability to move the chains and DeAndre Hopkins as the deep threat, look at his stat line, three completions for 154 yards. Who gets the player of the game today? I definitely think Arian Foster was the more important uh, player on the Houston Texans. Definitely uh, set the tone for the game. So we'll uh, we'll give Foster the player of the game. And uh, how about DeAndre Hopkins, uh, co uh, player of the game. We'll give him a leftover turkey leg from Thanksgiving a couple weeks ago. Maybe that will be good enough. Ooh. Danny Amendola can have uh, this penny that I found on the ground. That might be I good enough for him. there's stuffing in the back of the refrigerator <laughs> still. So. Ooh, stuffing can be a, a big harborer of bacteria, so you really want to be careful about stuffing, especially <laughs> once it's a few weeks old, as it should be in your refrigerator. I think now that we're talking about infected stuffing, that's going to be enough for sticky bleachers <laughs> this week. I am Corey signing off. I'm Bob. We'll see you guys next week.